Another function of an operating system is device management. So let's study about the controlling of the input output devices. So a computer uses device controllers to connect to I.O. devices to it, and each device controller is in charge of and uh, controls a set of devices of a specific type. The device controller maintains some local buffer storage and is responsible for moving the data between an I.O. device that it controls and its local buffer storage. Then device controller also has a few registers that it uses for communicating with the CPU. Then these registers are part of the regular memory address space and this scheme is called memory mapped I.O. Then we have two methods to transfer data from the controller's local buffer to the appropriate memory area of the computer area. The first one is non-DMA transfer. What does it mean? So as soon as the transfer of data from input device to the controller's local buffer is complete, what will happen? The controller sends an interrupt signal to the CPU. Can you put it in your notes and define what is this interrupt signal? Then CPU stops what it is doing concurrently and transfers control of the execution to the starting address of the service routine, which handles the interrupt. So interrupt service routine transfers the data from local buffer of the device controller to the main memory. Another type is DMA transfer. So let us discuss. When the operating system prepares for data transfer operation, it writes the relevant commands and their associated parameters into the controller's registers. After the controller has read the data from the device into its buffer, what will happen? It copies the data one byte or word at a time with its buffer into main memory at the specified memory address. So it does not involve the CPU. So device controller sends an interrupt to the CPU only after it completes copying the entire data. We have here simple and easy user interface to I.O. devices. So operating systems provide simple and easy user interface to all input-output devices. So they achieve this by organizing software for using I.O. devices as a series of layers. We have lower layers. It will hide the internal details. While we have the upper layers, it presents a nice, clean, uniform interface to the users. So here are the layers of the I.O. system, which we have discussed a while ago. And user-level software supports the standard of the I.O. system calls as library procedures, then we have device-independent software. It will perform I.O. functions that are common to all devices and map symbolic device names to the proper device driver. Then we have here device drivers. Converts the I.O. request into suitable commands for the appropriate device controller and writes the relevant commands and their associated parameters into the controller's registers. And we have your interrupt handlers causes interrupt to wake up the device driver after it completes data transfer and we have IO devices hardware it will perform the actual data of inputs and output. Next function is security. It deals with protecting the various resources and information of a computer system against destruction and an authorized access so we have two types. We have external and we have internal. When I say external, it deals with the securing computer against external factors such as fires, floods, earthquakes, stolen disks or tapes, or by maintaining adequate backup using security cards, allowing access to sensitive information to only trusted employees. So these are external security. But when you say internal security, it deals with the user authentication, access control, cryptography mechanism. In security, we have the term user authentication. 
It deals with the problem of verifying the identity of the user. And we have access control. Once authenticated, access control mechanisms prohibit a user or a process from accessing those resources or information that the user is not authorized to access. But when you say cryptography, it is a term means of encrypting private information so that an authorized access can't use information. Another function of operating system is command interpretation. It provides a set of commands using which the user can give instructions to the computer for getting some job done by it. And commands supported by the command interpretation module are known as system calls. So take note of this term, system calls. There are two types of user interfaces supported by various operating systems. We have command line interface. So user gives instructions to the command computer by typing the commands. And we have graphical user interface or GUI. So user gives commands to the system by selecting icon and menu item displayed on the screen with the use of point and draw device. Let's move to OS capability enhancement software. So software that will perform several tasks of routine nature frequently needed by users but are not provided as part of the operating system. So we have groups or categories here. We have translating programs. It will translate a source code into an object program. And we have library programs. Consists of frequently used functions and operations. And we have utility programs. So it assists users with system maintenance tasks such as disk formatting, data compression, data backups, and antivirus utilities. So what are the some popular operating systems? So we have your Unix operating system developed in the 1970 at the Bell Laboratories by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. Uh, this operating system is written in C language program and uh, it is multi-user time-sharing operating system. Another one we have MS-DOS stands for Microsoft Disk Operating System. It is a single-user OS for IBM and IBM compatible personal computers. And uh, there are three layers there, the basic uh, input output system, kernel, and the shell. It was popular in 1980s before Microsoft Windows came in. Then we have Microsoft developed by Microsoft to overcome limitations of the MS-DOS operating system. It is single user but multitasking OS. So this is the native interface of the GUI. And it is designed to be not just an OS, but also a complete operating environment. We had Microsoft Windows NT before. So this one is a multi-user time-sharing OS developed by Microsoft also. Designed to have a Unix-like feature so that it can be used for powerful workstations, network, database servers. So this Windows NT provides strict system security and rich of set of tools for software development. So we have here another example of an operating system. We have Linux. So this open source OS enhanced and backed by thousands of programmers worldwide. It is multitasking, multiprocessing OS original designed to be used in PCs. The name Linux is derived from the developer's name Linux Torvalds. And we have a lot of distributions. Example here is Red Hat. You can hear also about Mint. So difference in distribution is mostly set of tools, number of quality of applications, documentation, support, and service. That ends our topic six. And I have here a lot of keywords and phrases for you to be defined and kindly put it in your summary notes and kindly answer the three questions for your one minute to write. The first question, what are the salient or important thoughts you have learned? How do you feel about them? And what are the things that are not clear to you? Type your answers in MS Word document and send it to my email that has been written 
in your unit information guide. Thank you and have a nice day.